morning, everyone. Good morning, Mr. Bernard. So, I am Trevor Bernard, President of the Small Ruminants Association of Jamaica. Um, my job, I volunteer my time and effort because one of the things I want to do, I want to promote goat sheep and the rabbit industry. Small ruminants. This is the, the main focus that we focus on, these three animals basically. I got a call this morning and they asked me about the reindeer. But we have some reindeer wild all over inside the Portland area. I don't know if you have it over this side. But it will also form a part of um, small ruminants. Anything to do with small ruminants. So, you know, it's always nice to be around farmers. I, I really enjoy being around farmers and spending time with them and so forth. And, um, you know, and Mr. Constable is really, you know, the way he goes out and he gets these things done, you know, I'm always impressed. And, you know, we work as a team. You know, the whole small ruminant sector is teamwork. We have to unite together and we have to build and, and, and push and try and get everybody involved you know i i dream of seeing a couple small farmers with nothing grow this industry and have something and that makes these seminars so important training it is so important to get training on how to rear these animals um the animals the, the days of just tying out a goat in the bush and you just tying up and you walk away and leave him. You know, we need to move away from that. We need to grow the sector. The opportunity of growth with rearing goat and sheep is so, is so huge. There is such a huge market. We don't need to market animals. I don't even know where you get animals to buy. So Council, where you get animals to buy now? Do, you, do anybody realize and see that? I mean, I get calls all the time. Everybody wants animals to buy and you can't get it to buy. Which other product do any of you know that you can't get it to buy in Jamaica? What else is there that you just can't get it to buy? You, you can't even ramp up the production. People say to me, but Mr. Bernard, everybody going into boat here now in a short while the market is going to flood. How are you going to flood it? Can't it. Because it's a shortage. It's not just a shortage. It takes time to ramp it up. Mm -hmm. I don't think I might see. I don't know if I will see good production in my lifetime. We are able to meet demands. I don't know if it is even possible. So you can just imagine the demand. So there is no problem to get good to sell. So what is the problem? The problem is is for people to take it serious. Pay attention to your husbandry, your nutrition, the livelihood of the animals. You know, you have to make the animals happy. Happy animals produce, will produce for you. You have to, you have to spend time with the animals. Now, most small farmers in these communities mainly rear native animals. I don't want people to, to think that the name, the people like to call them scrub and you know, have all kind of names for them. It's actually my opinion that the, the native animals should be preserved because they are so strong, they are so resilient, they are tough, they are very productive. Nothing is wrong with the native animals. When you go into the hybrid animals and you're getting into boar and nubia, you get into more into these hybrid animals. They actually require more care, more food, more everything. I remember a couple of years ago, I saw a native goat just walking around. You know, in the olden days, you saw the animals just walking around and just feeding. They didn't have this big stealing problem like before. And it was in a drought time, and she had four, four kids, which is common with the, with the, with the native animals. And she struggled with these four kids not having enough feeding and was able to rear them and you look at them you know you see them just little and whingy i wonder how oh, them are going to live one of them are going to dead you know and 
this mother was able to rear these kids and wean them off. And in a short period of time, them wean off. They don't take long to wean off them because, you know, in a short period of time, you see them eating on their own and they just get off the ground and go. So I want in your program, in, in my whole, you know, advice to farmers, start with native animals, start with, start right there. Build some numbers. You want to have huge numbers. You know, you want to get to maybe 30, 40. Before you even start talking about I want a boar and I want new men and I want these big animals. Build some numbers with what you have. Try and select the bigger natives if you can. You can get some gravy, whatever. But don't try to reach. Don't try to reach out there because you want to have the biggest and the prettiest of animals and all of that. That's not it. Remember, we are rearing the animals and the end game is to make money. Are natives productive? Yes, they are. I've seen natives breed two times in a year. That's, that's, that's very common. With the hybrid goats, you're not really going to see that. It, it, it doesn't really happen. So at the end of the day, what is most important is how much meat you produce. How much meat you have on the ground. How much meat you're going to end up with to sell. Or, you know, my pet thing is the milk side of it. So, I see a lot of ladies inside here, and I always tell people that milk production in goat, any dairy operation, women, is women have to run it. Men don't have the discipline, in my opinion. Generally. Generally. We don't have that discipline. We never bred that way. We, men are not that disciplined. I don't even come from them. Men are not even that disciplined to look after goats, generally speaking. Men are not even disciplined enough to look after themselves sometimes. Yes. Right, you understand? <laughs> we don't know. You know, you have to have the woman behind the man kind of thing, you know? Right. That's why family is very important in rearing animals and goat rearing. Like you want to use it, yes. And that's why he set those things in the Bible, you know? And him set it in the Bible and tell me how we're supposed to do what and the purpose and what the women, the role that women play and the role that men play. play. So, in, in, in milk production, right now I can tell you, in the supermarkets, we are seeing a litre of milk, which is what, I think a pint, selling for like seven hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars a litre. Can you imagine that? I have seen... I have a, and, and I had a, well I still have her, she's old now, a native female that was producing like two, three liters of milk. Have you ever seen those big new, big um, those, those natives? Yeah. You have some natives with some nice other behind there and when you see them, I think those were probably coming from the Tuggingberg and, and you know, we have had Tuggingberg and the Alpine and those breeds and you know, the mix up and all of that. And you have some natives that produce a lot of milk. Those, if you decide to go into milk, this is the kind of animal you're going to select. You have to pay attention to the selection of what you're doing. You want animals that produce enough milk also to feed the kids and look after them and, and make them move forward. Um, milk, milk is a cash cow. When you are producing milk, you are, you are earning money every single day. You have a few females and you milk them. You do all of the processes. Training is, is required. And you can buck your own milk and supply the market with milk. You have situations of mothers. You, you know that goat milk is very close to, um, to our, our milk, to mama milk. You have... Mothers, you have people who would want goat milk to feed their children. Markets like this can exist not far, far away from your community. You know, and it's something that we have to create and something that we have to do. And it's a, it is an untapped market. I see people putting it in supermarkets. There are two entities now that are putting it in supermarkets. One of them, a friend of mine, Ruth, she cannot supply the market with milk. She, and, and that's why cluster groups are so important. What she does, she, she's in Trelawney and she has a cluster group of people in the, in the area. And 
because she wants to be in control of all the milk that she gets. So she has a team and she drives around the place to each farmer's location. The farmers prepare the animals, make sure they are properly fed and she milk the animals. And I think she pays them, I think it's $300 a litre she pays the farmer. So she drives around and she milk. Any, any farmer in the area that has animals for milking, she go there and she milk it harvest the milk and she does the processing and then she sells it. She sells it for a thousand dollars a litre. And she buys it for three hundred and she do all the processing and do all of that. Can you just imagine you have ten goats and you can get a litre of meat milk from each of them. That is, you know, you, 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 you see the money. You see the monetary value that goat milk has. And you have other things like, you know, the goat cheese which is something that the hotels use a lot in you know you know some of these specialized cooking of you know certain foods and so forth they use goat cheese and there is a niche market for these things goat cheese yogurt ice cream you know ice cream is another thing people who are lactose intolerant to um to the regular cow's milk you know goat milk is an alternative and you know you won't have any problems using goat milk. Um, so that is one of the reasons why I encourage goat, um, goat production with, where milk is concerned. Because my little talk on this is that to make money out of goat for meat production, you need at least maybe 200 animals. That's how I feel, to really make money. I mean, when I'm talking about making money, I'm talking about putting a good change in your hand so that you can buy a car and, you know, over a period of time build a house for yourself and do things like that. that that's how I look at it. It, it, it. You can't be rearing goats just for hand-to-mouth situation. It has to be a lot more than that. And the beauty with goat milk now, if you get into the milk inside, you can have 30 to 50 animals. Maybe you don't have a lot of space at your house. Maybe you don't have a lot of feed. Maybe you have certain limitations. Maybe it's you alone, you know? So, goat milk, you can rear a smaller number of animals and still make good money out of it. You know, it has huge, huge, huge potential. Ah, yes. So, we're going to delve into the detail right. um, shortly. So, we just want to thank Mr. Yeah. Mr. Bernard for just bringing greeting and his support for the entire program. I would just want to, you know, once yeah. again, I will thank you very much. Thank you. Um, thanks. So, right now, I'm going to show you a We have some refreshments out there. Thank 
everyone. It was really a pleasure, um, you know, bringing all of this to you. And, um, you know, all I want from all of this, if I even see one person, even if I see one person, because of the efforts of Khalil and myself and the team, if I see one person step up and get big and, and, and really move up, I know that I'm, I didn't waste yeah, my time. Yeah, yeah, yeah.